Now I'd like to move on to the topic of line integrals, complex line integrals. And I'm going to derive the equation for the line integral. Now, line integrals are something which I would imagine you've come across in your studies in the past. For example, if you want to calculate the work done by a force, you would perform the line integral along a particular path. Line integrals are sometimes referred to as path integrals or contour integrals. So let's consider a smooth curve and I'm going to call the curve C. And this is in the complex plane. And separate to that, let's consider a continuous function. I'm going to call the function f of z. Now let's say that the function f of z is continuous and defined at every point on the curve C. So we have all the points along the curve C, but at each point along C, f is also defined. So in order to discuss the line integral or derive the line integral, we need to break up the curve C in the following manner. So we have our complex plane here where we have our real axis and we have our imaginary axis. The curve C is in pink going from what you can see here Z0 right the way up to capital Z. Now I'm going to parameterize the curve using T. So I'm going to say, let's say, for example, the curve goes from x is equal to a to x is equal to b. I'm going to parameterize it with t, saying that t sub 0 or t 0 corresponds to a, t sub n corresponds to b. And for every t sub n, we have a corresponding z. z is the value of our function. Excuse me, z is the point, excuse me, along c. So for every value along the x-axis parameterized by t, we have a point on the curve which we parameterize with z. So we break up our curve into a series of points, z0, z1, zm-1, m zm and so on. And each of those is actual fact, in actual fact gotten by looking at the points t sub 0, t sub 1 and the whole way up on the x-axis. Of course, if we were to look at the separation between two points on the curve C, let's take, for example, Z sub M minus one and Z sub M, we would get the magnitude of delta Z sub M. So that deals or takes care of the curve C, but what it does not take care of is the continuous function Z, or excuse me, F of Z, which is defined at every one of the points. So it's defined, let's say it, z sub 0 and z sub 1 and so on. But the points z sub 0, z sub 1 and so on aren't really good for us. We need to look at, we need to use a, another dummy variable in order to analyze the behavior of our function f of z on the curve. So I introduce a second set of points, which of course are coincident with the points z0, z1 and so on. And I give them, I call them p. So, in, so z corresponds to points on the curve P corresponds to the, uh, the points where the force field is defined. And of course, in this particular case, the force field and the curve coincide. And of course, I give it a subscript. So this is the, the point P sub M. This might be the point P sub M minus one. I'm just making a distinction between the points in the curve, which I'm gonna call, give the placeholder Z, and the points for the force, which I'm going to give the placeholder p. Now, if we want to calculate the value of our function at a particular point, we would have to calculate f of p sub m. That's the value of our function at the point p sub m. Of course, we are able to parameterize our function using t if we like. Now, let's place our p sub m between z sub m minus one and z sub m, which is equivalent to placing it between t sub m minus one and t sub m. This means that the point P2, where the function f of z is defined, is between the points z1 and z2 on the curve, or t1 and t2 on the x-axis. 
or p sub m, where the function f of z is defined, is along, or excuse me, is between the point z sub m minus 1 on the curve and z sub m.